I've started reading a book uh, last week by Michael Hyatt called Best Year Ever. It's a book about setting and achieving goals in the coming year. It's actually a really great book. And uh, he breaks out the different types of goals that you can set for your life, like in the 10 different categories. And one of them is the spiritual aspect of your life. And I really began to think about what do I want God to do in my life in this coming year? Because, you know, if you're a follower of Jesus, you never get to the point where you're as close to God as you could be. That's always a process that you're, that you're growing in, and you're always hopefully moving forward and, and, and growing more intimate with the Lord and, and more, more uh, uh, knowledgeable and, and more close. And it reminded me of a verse that I've been thinking about over the last few months uh, from the 49th chapter of the book of Isaiah as well. And this verse, I believe, really began to encapture what I wanted God to do in my life in the coming year. And I just wanted to share it with you guys today because I think that as we look forward to 2019, this could be the greatest year of your life. It really could be. And if we can draw close to God, and if we can keep the 49th chapter of Isaiah on the tip of our brain this year, I believe God is going to take our faith to a new level. God is going to do something amazing. God is going to do something powerful within us. And so I want us to look at these three aspects today of, of the best year ever. And the prophet Isaiah, the 8th century prophet, begins by saying this in verse 15, Can a woman forget her nursing child or lack of of compassion for the child of her womb, even if these forget, yet I will not forget you. Look, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. And uh, the prophet Isaiah is writing here many, many years ago to the people of Judah. He predicts that they're going to be overthrown uh, by the Assyrian Empire. They're going to be taken into captivity but that through the faithfulness of God, their nation is going to be reestablished in Jerusalem. The city is going to be rebuilt. The walls around the city, the temple. God is going to restore Israel and the people of Judah to the nation that they were before. And so the book of Isaiah actually is a prophetic book that, that talks a lot about some of the future suffering of Israel. But it also is a very comforting book. Because one of the great themes of Isaiah is the faithfulness of God. God is with us even when we go through the worst of adversity. And it's with that in mind that the prophet tells the people, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. Right before that, he compares the relationship between God and his people to that of a mother and a little infant baby. And in verse 15, he asks a rhetorical question. Um, you know, would a mother neglect her newborn baby? You know, when you have a baby, I've never had a baby before, but I've fathered a couple of kids, and I do know this, that when you have little babies, babies don't go far from mama. Amen? Is that right? I mean, you know, you would never deliver a baby and then go on a European vacation for a month and leave baby behind, right? Baby goes with mama. Wherever mama goes, baby goes. And in the middle of the night, in the middle of the afternoon, the time doesn't matter. Mom is always on call taking care of that baby. But he says in verse 15, even if some would neglect their little babies, I will never forget about you. And he compares that relationship between the Heavenly Father and His children to that of the most intimate and the closest of relationships, a mother and a newborn baby. And he says, but even if the mother would leave the baby, I will never forsake you, for you have been inscribed on the palm of my hand. He says, I, I will never forget you. And I love this word look in verse 16, because he says, look. Another translation says, behold. And whenever you read the word behold in the Bible, that means something big is coming, right? Like, don't miss this. This is amazing. Behold, look, see it, don't miss it. I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. 
look, check this out. This is something big. I want to share with you three things today. I know there's four things on your notes, and you note-taking people are going to lose your mind because I yanked point four yesterday morning. You'll be okay if you don't get the blanks. We literally have some people that are like, Pastor, I missed one. I cannot leave church today until you tell me what this is. But I'm going to give you three today. Check this out. Number one, 2019 is going to be the best year ever because we have fantastic favor. Fantastic favor. And that's what the Bible also calls grace. Grace is getting things that we don't deserve. Fantastic favor. Uh, And he says, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. In other words, we do not inscribe ourselves on the hands of God. God is the one who inscribes us. A lot of folks think that if they can just be good enough, if they can just do certain things, if they can achieve uh, certain goals, that somehow we will be able to etch our name into the palm of God. But God says, oh, no, 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 no. It is all my sovereign act. I, I am the one who has etched your identity. You're being on the palms of my hands. So he, he, he's the one that does the writing, and it's not by chance. If, if we could inscribe ourselves, there would probably be some mistakes along the way, right? I, I have a friend um, that he got a Mr. T tattoo on his arm when he was like 18 years old. I mean, it took up like the whole arm. Mr. T. I loved the A-team as a kid, but I don't love Mr. T that much. Mr. T, for crying out When he was going to get married, his fiance said, I will not say I do at the altar until you get that thing removed. So he started that process of tattoo removal. This is a big tattoo, Mr. T. Mr. T. He later said, biggest mistake of my life. Why did I get Mr. T etched onto my arm? I don't know. Maybe you've made a mistake with a tattoo that you've gotten. Gina and I were at Starbucks in the middle of Kansas on a road trip a couple of years ago. There was a really uh, beautiful young lady in her 20s that was there, and she had Philippians 4.13 tattooed all up and down her arm. I'm talking like from here to here, Philippians 4.13, in the most beautiful cursive that you've ever seen before. And the ink looked like she had gotten it done yesterday. I mean, like it was fresh. And Gina was going to go over and tell her how much that she loved the Bible verse, Philippians 4.13, because that is one of our favorites. But when she got about 10 feet away from her, she recognized that the word Philippians had been misspelled. Whoops. P H I L I P instead of P P. Philippians. Gina's like, I didn't want to tell her. I didn't want to break the news to her that what had been permanently put on her body was misspelled. Philippians 4 13. Wow. I found this tattoo on the internet. The other day, this mom, this loving mom wanted to have pictures of her children etched on her body. I call this the Cro-Magnon kids. What happened? Now, before you get a tattoo, you need to first of all make sure that your tattoo artist can spell and has at least a seventh grade education. But you also want to make sure that they have artistic inclination, right? Because if not, your children may turn out to look like this, for crying out loud. Wow. All that to say, if we etched ourselves into the hand of God, we may make a mistake. But God never does. God is always faithful. We can always count on God. God will always get it right. There is no error. There is no erasure. There are no deletes. And he says, behold, I have inscribed you not I will or I might but it's a thing of the past if you're in Jesus Christ you have been inscribed onto the palms of God's hand I have inscribed and God inscribed us on the palm of his hand because he was always thinking about us Um, a couple years ago my daughter grabbed my phone she had watched me put in my code and she changed my screensaver to this 
she went through all my pictures and she found this really cute picture of us together. You know, she's getting a piggyback and she's laughing and she's like six years old and she's bigger now. But I just never changed it because of what she said to me. She said, Dad, I changed your picture because I want you to always think about me. Is that awesome? And so every day when I look at my phone, the first thing that I think about is that picture of her and I together. It's an awesome thing. It's a constant reminder. God etched us on the palm of his hand so he could always be cognizant and always be thinking about us. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves us. And that's favor and that's grace. And we have that in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we have it in him. Now he says here, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. In other words, plural. God loved you so much that he wrote you down twice. How about that? I mean, it's an awesome thing to write one thing down. You know it's important if you write it down, one thing. What if you wrote it down two times? Then you know it's really important. God says, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Two times. Thinking about you. A constant reminder. And we doubt him, but God is never fickle. And he is never faithless. I am inscribed on his hands. We have fantastic favor. We also have, check this out, compelling, a compelling connection. A compelling connection. Look at the verse again. Look, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Uh, he addresses the audience as you. I have, addressed, I have inscribed you, not him or her or even them, but, but you. And it doesn't even say individual names, you know? I mean, that would be amazing if God had inscribed our names. But he says, I have inscribed you, you. God has inscribed not just your name, but everything about you. Your strengths, your weaknesses, your, your failures, your, your climactic accomplishments, your past, your future, everything about you. God's plan for your life has been inscribed on the palms of his hands. He says, I've inscribed you. Not just an image of you, but not just your name, but, but you yourselves. I know the hairs uh, 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 on your head, the number of hairs on your head. I, I, I know your future. I know your past. I, I know everything about you. And because of that, we have a compelling connection. We are linked to God. He has engraved us on the palms of his hand. And notice he says engraved, not just printed or stamped or copied, but etched, <laughs> engraved, right? Something more profound. Uh, they say that sonograms today are in 4D. Is that amazing? Have you guys seen 4D sonograms? They're amazing. I was looking at some pictures the other day. It literally looks like somebody had an iPhone in the womb. The detail is incredible. That little baby, you know, six months old or however old it is, you can see the definitions of the face and the eyes, and you can see, it's, it's remarkable the detail that's, that's there. Technology has just advanced so much that, 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 that we could not see even a few years ago that we can see today. I think that God, when he inscribed us onto his hands, he did not do so even in 4D. He did in all D. All D. Everything about us has been etched into his hand and God would not have done that if we didn't mean something very very significant to him God sees you with remarkable clarity uh, when I was in high school and college many of you know that I was a runner and uh, loved to run long distance races and before the race the coach would always kind of sit down with me and we would map out kind of a plan for the race and we would write down the splits. So if, if, if it was a, a race with four laps or with eight laps or whatever it was, however many laps it was, 5,000 meters, whatever, there would be a goal for each lap. And I would write it on the palm of my hand. And I never wrote it 
out here on the exterior of the hand because I didn't want the opposing runners to know what the time that I was shooting for, right? It was kind of like, it was a little bit confidential, you know? And so as we would come through the first lap and then the second lap, I would see if I was either on pace or if I needed to pick it up or if I, if I was right on the money or, or what I needed to do. And I was constantly judging my strategy based on what was written on my hand. But after the race was over, I would go and wash my hands and I would get ready for the next race. But God says something even more profound. He says, I have etched it onto the palms of my hands. In other words, it cannot be erased. It cannot be removed. It cannot be taken away. And because of that, we have an amazing connection with God. We have an amazing connection with Him. We are inscribed on His hands. When someone's name is inscribed on God's hand, his life is connected with God's heart. With God's heart. That's why Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. We're one. See, when we're in Christ, we're one. We're one. You can't pull the branches away from the vine because if you do, it'll die, right? They're, they're one. They're together. They're connected. They're interwoven. They are one fabric. They are linked. We are forever linked to God when we're in Christ. You would never bake a cake and then say, you know what? I want to pull the butter out of that, right? I want my sugar back. <laughs> Too late, right? It's one. It's been brought together. It's one. Uh, at conception, a father and a mother come together and two people become one. And you can't say to the baby, I want to pull all of mom's genetics out of you. It doesn't work that way. Two have become one. When you're in Christ, two have become one. And God is in you. That's why Colossians 1.27 said, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in you. Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but it is Christ in me. And then in Ephesians 3.17, the Bible says that Christ may make his home in your hearts through faith. We're one with the Lord. We're one with him. And every moment of every day, God continually is thinking about you. That's why the gospel writer John said in John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. We've been etched into the hands, the palms of God. We have 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. We're new in Christ. We have fantastic favor. We have a compelling connection. But we also see God's constant concern. God wrote us on the palms of his hands because he's constantly concerned about, about you. You know, normally in ancient times, the servant would carry the mark of the master. But in Isaiah 49, the master carries the mark of the servant. Why would the master be concerned with the emblem of the servant? Because he cares about you. He cares about you. He cares about you. Look at it again. Look, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. And listen, if God cares about you, he's going to meet your need. There's no need that you have that is too great for God. The 23rd Psalm describes God as a shepherd and we as his sheep. The shepherd does not do his job by letting the sheep wander off. The shepherd takes care of the needs of the sheep. A farmer would not go out and plant a crop and then walk away and leave it behind. The farmer works the field. God God the Father is taking care of the needs of his children. There's no need that you have today that is too great for God. Many of you are facing big challenges in 2019. Know this, God is thinking about you. God is with you. God is providing for you. God is for and with you. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. We went out of town this last week and 
we left midnight, the black cat, midnight at home for one solid week. When we got home, midnight was going crazy. She had the most, the most pathetic meow, like, you guys left me here and forgot about me. It was like, meow, you know what I mean? She was crawling all over us. And she's, you know, an affectionate cat, but this was like next level. I think she had had too much catnip maybe, and she was just going crazy. She actually crawled under the covers with Gina and laid parallel with her and snuggled up beside her. I mean, she was waking us up at 2 a.m. just to make sure that we were still home. It was the poor little thing, I mean, she felt completely neglected. What she didn't realize is that we had sent Cat Nanny to take care of Midnight. And in our absence, Cat Nanny was there changing her litter box, feeding her, giving her belly rubs. She was even taking pictures and sending them to Gina with constant updates about the well-being of the cat. Midnight did not know that. She felt completely neglected. It was like, guys, please never leave me again. Don't do it. I wonder if God is meeting your needs in a way that is unexpected and you have interpreted that as abandonment, but instead God's faithfulness and his provision has still profoundly been operating in your life. God's been looking out for you. God's been watching out for you. And we struggle with fear and with doubt, and we feel abandoned and forgotten sometimes. But remember this, you're etched on the palm of his hand. You're etched on the palm of his hand. Circumstances may lead us to feel a certain way. And by the way, feelings are an important part of life. We all feel. But the truth is sometimes what we feel is not reality. And if we live only by our feelings, only by what we feel, we will never understand the power and the grace of God. We love God. We serve God. We know God is with us and for us and beside us, even when we aren't feeling it. Amen? Even when we're not feeling it, God is faithful even when we are faithless. That's why our trust and our confidence is in Him. And that's why we have a great connection with the Lord. God cares for you. God cares for you. I love this concept of the palm of the hand. In the ancient world, war, and when someone would go into war, they would punch or fight with a fist. Right? The exterior of the hand is, is the place of warfare and combat. But the palm, the palm of the hand is the place of tenderness. Right? He says, I, I've etched you on the palm of my hand. I was thinking about that this week, and it occurred to me that it's with the palm that God wipes away our tears. It's with the palm that God pats us on the back. It's with his palm that he carries us when we cannot go forward anymore. The palm is his tenderness and his mercy. And it is there that he has etched us onto the palm of his hand. Well, why is 2019 going to be an amazing year? Huh. We have a fantastic favor, a compelling connection, a constant concern and that's why he says i will never forget you i have inscribed you on the palms of my hands let's pray together let's just bow our hearts and our heads for just a moment